Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, Chavarim, shalom. This is Ross Ayadonis here. This is Yad in here. Just briefly here, we did a full, a full video like we like to share, but was reasoning for brethren um, just recently and also with a few others that were speaking around the same subject matter concerning the so-called Karas and the Christ connection. This is what we regard as pseudo like pseudo-linguistics and within the um, so-called black consciousness and the Kemetic, this has really been believed without being properly fact-checked, right? And I know a lot of ones have, have, have like ascribed a lot to this, you know, in other words, like when you believe something and you ascribe a lot to it, it can happen to any of us. And then you get to find out that, well, something else is really the true the truth of the matter. This is a prime example right here. We go into a little more detail right here concerning the alleged, right, the pseudo um, kemetic, right, etymology of Christ and Karast, right? And from an English speaking perspective, if you understand some of the basics, a general, you know, the general theory, the general, like have a general education perspective of this you really understand how this has crept in and has been led to believe because of the ignorance when i say ignorance basically we're saying because ones really just don't know right we know many of us might be familiar with may not really truly um know english but we are familiar with the english language and therefore because of our very general you know most of us basic familiarity with the english language we can be fooled by a lot of things in English that has been translated from other languages. And this is what helps one to understand how the system is kind of built and how it's run, how it's operated, how it keeps ones right into those um, those um, like apartments and compartments of ignorance because it gets reinforced because you've heard Christ, K-R-S-T and then C-H-R-I-S-T, and they say, well, this equals that, and then they add a lot of other things to back up the first faulty premise, All right? So we get into some of the details on the linguistics. You know, the difference really here is between what is often represented as a K-H sound, but when we study the Ra'en um, um, Komet or Kamut, right? When we study the, the language, you know, the language that was spoken of ancient Egypt, and we also compare it with the more, um, the oracular, right, the oracles, you know, to speak about the metunet, uh, right, to the more, you could say, holy or religious, is, is a particular um, curated use of language, you know, for the ancient spiritual, religious um, purposes, you know, which is a whole other category, right? But here it's looking at, well, this first glyph, and then you can see that in the K, you see the K, it has a dot right there. Now we go into the details that we're not going to go through the details right here again, but this is kind of a heads up, right? Because we've been finding in our studies a lot of examples of this, things that, you know, we just don't only study the Afro-Semitic. In fact, um, ancient, um, Rayen Kamut, Rayen Chem, right, or the language of Chem or Kam or Ham, the language of Kemet, as ones would say, the people of Kemet, it was the Afro Asiatic, was referred to as Afro Asiatic linguistically, right, and this is a direct link here, right, with the inner, inner continent, inner Ethiopia, inner Tobia, what we can call inner Africa, getting to the root. By right, getting to the root. So the symbol that's KH, they see KH there. When we study what's known and can be verified of the Rayen Khamut, right, the ancient Egyptian language and linguistics, we find that that glyph there, the symbol there, is really a Q symbol, right? It's actually a Q symbol, right? It's a Q symbol. And really doesn't really have anything to do with anointing in the Hebrew sense. Just to show this kind of basically here, as we say, we went into some more, more of the details. You can see down here the Q. You can see that Q right there. It's a Q symbol. 
right? And Afro-Semitically, you can see it right here, it's a Q symbol, it's like a hill, right? Some say it's a symbol of a hill, right? Or, you know, you can look at it symbolically like half of a square, right? So we get into some of the details right there and we can cross-reference. You see right here, the Q here, you can see the Q, that's the symbol right there. The Q symbol, and you can see right there, there's the K symbol, if it's a K symbol. But then you can also see that there are H symbols, right? And then also there are nuances, different sort of, see in English, English is a very flat language, right? English is a very flat language. You can see the KH, look at the KH right there. You see the KH right there? So what we've been led to believe Right, concerning ancient so-called Egyptology, right, and then what has crept into the black spheres of what we refer to as like comedic, you know, comedic science. This pseudo, right? There's a lot that's true in comedic science, and from you know we say the pro-black perspective of ancient archaeology, there's enough, enough that's true, right? But we have to weed out of it that which is not true and not continue to build by right? try to build on a faulty foundation a faulty groundation like saying well this here is christ in hieroglyphics because we know where these ideas and philosophies and perspectives came from right and even when we start to go into the gerald macy perspective we start to look at what he wrote and what he put out so forth and so on we can find enough that was true right and correct and accurate but what happens when we find that which was not true what do we do with that which was not true do we just ignore it and say well we've come too far we can't you know we can't correct ourselves like right here it says mummy anoint and steep is it steep or is it sleep these two do not you know what's happening is that for the best of what we're seeking to do we still are moving from a half original perspective. When I say half original, what well, we know, okay, we black people, right? And we're not so-called white people or what we regard as so-called white culture, but this is an ancient black culture and we can identify, we get that right there. And it also identifies a lot of people, the constant, we get all of that right there. But that does not excuse my pseudoscience or pseudo linguistics and also many 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 of those who are at the forefront right of what is called comedic science or um we could say um ancient egypt from a black some will say afrocentric you know they try to use that term not but from a black perspective how about from an afro semitic perspective because when we say afro asiatic we talk about ancient egyptian the ryan Camus. Right, Orion Kemet, Orion Komu, right? That ancient, the ancient Kemetic was Afro Semitic, right? And the real roots is not the pseudo Canaanitish thing that a lot of Europeans and other pseudo scholars are pushing, but really is the Ethiopic. This is what we point out Legacy Allen's works. Right, his scholarly works that gives us a perspective and show that there are many points of correspondence that will tell us that the Ethiopia, as that book by Reverend Sterling M. Means, a very good book by a Reverend, even bringing in some, some basic levels, you know, um, e Ethiopia, the missing link in African history. So, Ethiopia also the missing link. In, in, in Egypt, so-called, quote, Egyptology or Kemetic science, right? And this is what we prove. So the, the K sound, some would say, though, the K sound is actually a, a Q sound, Ryan Kamut, Ryan Kemet, right, the Egyptian language. Some would say that the K sound, let's bring this out right here, some would try to allege that the K sound is actually... Right, someone said that the K sound, let's see if we can bring up one right here. That the K sound, let's go over here. This is what we're talking about. Someone said that the K sound is not a Q. We say that that K sound is a Q sound, right? A Q sound. And there are other words, like there's karas, karas, or karst, 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 karas, karst, karas. We have this Ethiopically. Right? And then we have Karis, 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 right? And then we have Christos. I just named three particular words, Ethiopic root words, that are at the very root of the so-called Nile Valley civilization, right? 
Now, see, here's how it breaks down right here, what they call karas, really is karas, 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 or karas. And we know that the click, this Q click, is something that is not, you know, indigenous, right, to the West. So a lot of ones and ones, when they see this, they say, oh, that's where it came from. It came from ancient Egypt. But that is not the truth. It came from another Afro-Asiatic, Afro-Semitic culture. So when we look at the Hebrews in the scripture and we look at the ancient Egyptians, right, of the monuments and the ancient, most ancient archaeology, they were Afro-Asiatic, Afro-Semitic, right, people. Now, I, I use this terminology because we emphasize the Afro part is the Hamo, the Hamo, Hamo, the Camo, Kemetic, Semitic. Right? So this means that, of course, if these people share a common linguistic, when we speak about linguistic, we're talking about mother tongue, if they share these sort of roots, well, no doubt they share other roots. Right? But then to kind of lie to our people and say, well, the white man came with whitewashing our story, but even when the white man came into Judaism and Christianity, it already, what he calls Judaism and Christianity, already existed, right, apart from his influence. And we can't take his latter day, um, uh, his latter day uh, interference, right, you know, in it and then try to project on the past. Note this right here, just as a simple basic chart. And basic can be pointed at and referenced. You have a Q sound. Notice you have a Q, look on it, you have the Q sound in the second column, right? You, we have a KH sound, right, in the fourth column. At the beginning, at the top of the fifth column, going from right, I mean left, actually left to right, in this case right here, at the top of the fifth column, we have a K sound. So we have a glyph for Q, a glyph for KH, and a glyph for K. We've studied and we study ancient, you know, Egypt and, and Mitzrayim and Kemet, right? And one thing is interesting is that even in some of what they find in archaeology, when some of the scribes made a mistake, if it was supposed to be a Q glyph and they put a KH or a K glyph, that was struck out. So that shows that they knew the difference, right? Of course, they should in the different glyphs and in what sonic or phonetic or, or, or syllabolic sound they represented. People say, oh, they didn't have vowels. Well, you can't see the vowels that they did have. They obviously understood their vowels. It's like unpointed Hebrew, right? Even some old Hebrew you know, writings or Hebraic sort of writings. Many of them are unpointed, but when you know the linguistics and know the language, we take out the vowels out of English and something that most ones might be familiar with, or even if they're not familiar with it. If we take the vowels out of English, most ones will be able to read some simple, basic English things. Think about it for a moment, even though the vowels are not there. So what we're doing is following the so-called white man, right, in his research into so-called black culture, Right. And we are regurgitating a lot of his mindset, his perspective. When we say, well, whether it was Q, K, H, K, it's all the same thing. And we just pointed out that many of the scribes, when they were writing parchment, papyrus, or when they were sketching out on the walls for some monument or whatever, if they made a mistake in one glyph, right, they corrected it. And if it was not corrected and already got carved in, it would the whole thing would be thrown out or try they'll try to reuse it because it'll be off. And they understood the importance, right, of word sound and and we could say the visual, even the visual representation of the word sound and the power, which is the meaning of what something is. And so this is why we focus on this right here and we'd like to share this coming forward coming up get into some more of the details basically let's just bring it up right here 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 right because you have to remember that when a lot of these things were led to believe even this whole association was not something that black scholars doing their own independent research because a lot of that was not you have to think about this for a moment black folks right black people africans if we want to call them africans in the latter day terminology they would have never 
had what we call today comedic science or Egyptology in the way that they have it. Why? Because we would not desecrate right, the resting place of our ancestors or even to desecrate the resting place of other people ancestors it's something that regards to the thousands of tribes or different languages and cultures that we can point to on the continent of called africa this is something that was just a common sense a common value we did not desecrate but now others have gone and desecrate what many regard to be our and their ancestors and we go along with it and we champion a lot of rhetoric and, and pseudo-scientific and racist, white racism, white supremacy goes beyond just the cover story, goes beyond just the way the picture look, whether they whitewash it or they make it a little more white looking, as we see in many of even some of the budge books, because they didn't have cameras. You know, they didn't have cameras way back then. So sometimes they had to draw what these things were. Right. And now we get to see what the actual picture or artifact they was drawing. And we can say, wow, look at that. You can clearly see that this does not look white or like a European latter day white person. Right. So-called. But it looks more like a so-called black person or a non so-called white person. So if we see that done just visually with the pictures and the painting. We have to recognize that's also done with the words. But what do they say? If you want to hide something from some people, right, you put it in the book. And we'll say, well, if you want to hide something from some people, if they're looking in the book, you put it in the language. You put it in the words. And if you want to fool people, you do exactly what they've done with this whole karas, this karas, 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 karas thing. Right? Karas, karas, right? And karas, karas, and Christ and Christos are different. These are different. There's a different meaning, right? So karis or karas, karis does refer to burial, right? But that is not a one-to-one -one for Christos from Creo, even when we start to look into the Koine Greek, right? Then we start looking into the Koine Greek. And let's not be hypocrites. When we talk about Greek and we talk about these languages, some people will be dismissive, but they'll be dismissive speaking a so-called another language that is called a white man's language and that is our Anglo-American language that's called English. So while they'll dismiss our research into the Hebraic influence in the coin of Greek of the New Testament, they will willingly accept the English that they're speaking out of their mouth, not really understanding and being frustrated as uck because linguistic, the linguistic, as His Majesty Gormawi Nagus Neges says that language is the key of culture. Right? And communication between man and man. So, Christ or Karas, Karist, and Christos or Christ is not one and the same etymologically. And it's going to take some ones, I think, a longer time to realize it. And I say this because, you know, we, like a lot of the people that we speak to, you know, we be black. Right? Okay, here, 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 we're on day three, so one can see when this is coming through. Ideal for this time, since we're speaking about ancient Egypt, ancient Mitzrayim, ancient Kemet or Chomet, Chomet, Kamut, right? Yeah, so right here, 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 the etymology of Christos, right, is different than Karast, right? And as we said, it, mark, mark what we're saying here. A lot of people are going to ridicule or attempt to ridicule, right, being linguistically really ignorant, right? And sometimes we can go to the language that's the English, start out there, right? What we're sharing right here is a fact that should have already been corrected, but hasn't been corrected. And, like, first we're delivering this to our people. Like you say, we, the black people, especially over here in these Americas and Caribbean, whether the ones call themselves Kemetic, you know, or hold to the Kemetic or the Judeo-Christian from a black view, you know, um, Judaism, Christian, Islam, or, or, or hold to some other point of view, right, as our black people seeking, you know, for education, recognizing that education is the key, that we have to educate one another. Let's stop dismissing when one of our own people presents it and even can take on the further questions right, about this to show and prove. We're going to share the next video that we went into a little bit more on show and prove, but I think this kind of gives a good summary for right now. Right? We, show, we showed you the, the, the basic, the general basic 
um, glyphs, right? Which have been proven, we can prove from a few different perspectives, right? And most of these perspectives are proven it are linguistic perspectives. The ancients had a Q sound. In the English Western Gentile language, the Q is not fully used. Right? Thus we find among many of the so-called African and Ethiopian tribes, there's the click speakers like in the South and Ethiopia where they say it's a ke, ke. They have words that are ke. They don't interchange generally the ke, the Q sound, right, with the ke or the ke, even the ke, ke, ke. Many have the ke, ke, and, and he, and ke, and ke is not the same sound. Right? It's not the same sound. And note this, many of us make a nuance, right? It's what's up here in this North country, whether somebody says nigger, right? Nigger or nigga. We say those are totally different, don't we? Most of us will agree, even if we don't like the word, the use of the word, ones will say, those who say nigger and those who say nigga is totally different. It's like the whole thing in, in Jamaica among the Benjamites, right? Jaman, Yaman, when they say like Ras, right? To say Ras, like Rastafari head. And when they say Ras, like they're saying like backside from a more Patois, kind of more indigenous thing. That doesn't have anything to do with the um, Afro-Shemitic royal and Haric language. You know what I'm saying? So these words, they sound the same. So often if we hear a foreign word, we're going to associate it with what it sounds like to us. This is the same very thing that some ones and ones in ancient Egyptological studies have done. And they put this forward because you have to recognize that many white people or Europeans, European white people, had their own issues right, with their own whitewashed version of Christianity as well as Judaism. All right, so it's not just the fact that we could say the European peoples took other people's culture and have spun it around and done something and using it, you know, for their own purposes for 400 plus years. You see what I'm saying? But their own people, many of their own people felt oppressed <laughs> by, we say, Christianity, especially among the Europeans. So when they came across ancient Egypt, they found something outside the paradigm, right, of whitewash Judaism and Christianity, Judeo-Christianity, that the, 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 the counterfeit Christianity of the Europeans. Because we will continue to say that the real so-called Christ Christianity that relates to Yeshua HaMoshiach, you know, so forth and so on, is black and even for latter-day terminology is African. Right. And was a hundred, almost an 80 degree opposite of what many of us in our pre-existing condition, right, have been kind of conditioned. Because we have to look at the Christianization, the whitewash Christianization influence on us and start to go through, you, you could say, point by point to say, well, this is how we were told it. Right. Is this how it is? Right. And because we hear that Ethiopia right, has an ancient Judeo-Christian heritage, we should not assume that it is necessarily the same as what we hear about and heard about as, you know, Judaism and Christianity in the Western whitewash version. But the point right here is that Christ, Christos, and Karis, 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 this is a false association. This is a pseudo-linguistics why right? we'll say cometic pseudoscience or cometic pseudo linguistic pseudo uh, pseudoscience when, when dealing with linguistics here and we're seeking to correct this we're going to show and prove some more a lot of ones have already fought against this with no linguistic backative but because they have made themselves believe this and then they stack other points on top of the first faulty belief. So Christ or Christos does not equal the karas, karas or karas, karas, karas from ancient Egypt. It's a similar, it seems similar when we put it in the English Latin, Latin letters, the English letters. But then when we study the English language, we know that the English language is not able to express fully by so many other indigenous and ancient languages. So that's just a point of order right there, there, there. Shalom Chabarim. Yes, I. Shalom. More to come. Stay tuned for the fuller video and some other topical um, 
themes, you know, some discussions, you know, hopefully we have some more reason and, and more facts and more evidence to come. Shalom, Habarim, Shalom. Check out the LOJS.org, also the live uh, streaming on Rastafari Israelites. Yes, I give thanks.